is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Weird News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and um, Thanksgiving is in two days. So first off, happy Thanksgiving. And second off, um, I hope you're surviving the week. So some of you may already be off from work. Some of you may not be. Some of you may be frantically trying to figure out what's going on for Thanksgiving and how you're going to get everything done. Um, I was talking to my mom today and she said, well, actually, uh, I was talking to my mom yesterday as well. And, uh, she said, Hey, guess what I'm, guess what I'm doing tomorrow? And I said, going to the bistro with dad for your anniversary lunch. And she said, Oh, no, I hadn't really thought about that. <laughs> no, I'm going I'm going to the grocery store with your brother to buy stuff for Thanksgiving dinner. Yeah, I mean, moms, they're fun and silly. So she forgot about her anniversary, but then she, they, they did go to the bistro for lunch. It's their favorite place in my tiny little hometown. And my one niece was home uh, for a visit, so she was able to go to lunch with them and go on the very exciting shopping trip with the brother who is her dad. So, hey, it all worked out. But Thanksgiving, lots of families have lots of traditions. I would love to hear about any of your traditions, especially if they're weird, since this is the Weird News Podcast. Do you have any weird traditions? My weird holiday tradition is more Easter because, um, and it's not a tradition anymore. Thank goodness. It, I probably mentioned it before, if not on this podcast, then on another podcast. But my grandfather used to um, smack Easter eggs on our heads to crack the shells. The, you know, hard-boiled Easter eggs, obviously. Yeah, it was kind of mean, actually. And yet we all thought it was hilarious and just thought it was just grandpa. So th- that's Easter. I'm trying to think if we have any sort of weird Thanksgiving traditions. And I'm not coming up with anything off the top of my head, but I'll keep thinking about it. Maybe something will occur to me as we go through the stories. The first story we are going to talk about is um, Thanksgiving food. What are the traditional foods or what do you consider to be traditional? Because I have learned that what I consider to be traditional are, is not what everyone considers to be traditional. Of course, it depends on your family, where you grow up, all kinds of things. When I spent my first Thanksgiving with my husband, I well, I learned the joy of sweet potato pie, first of all, but mac and cheese and chitlins were not on my Thanksgiving list of normal, quote unquote, normal foods for Thanksgiving. So I, I'm learning. I, I got to learn, you know, I've learned a lot of things from marriage. He's horrified that we don't have macaroni and cheese at our Thanksgiving, but we're learning from each other. Thank goodness. I probably mentioned it before, if not on this podcast, then on another podcast. But my grandfather used to um, smack Easter eggs on our heads to crack the shells. The, you know, hard boiled Easter eggs, obviously. Yeah, it was kind of mean, actually. And yet we all thought it was hilarious and just thought it was just grandpa. So that that's Easter. I'm trying to think if we have any sort of weird Thanksgiving traditions. And I'm not coming up with anything off the top of my head, but I'll keep thinking about it. Maybe something will occur to me as we go through the stories. The first story we are going to talk about is um, Thanksgiving food. What are the traditional foods or what do you consider to be traditional? Because I have learned that what I consider to be traditional are, is not what everyone considers to be traditional. Of course, it depends on your family, where you grow up, all kinds of things. When I spent my first Thanksgiving with my husband, I, well, I learned the joy of sweet potato pie, first of all, but mac and cheese and chitlins were not on my Thanksgiving list of 
normal, quote unquote, normal foods for Thanksgiving. So I, I'm learning. I, I got to learn, you know, I've learned a lot of things from marriage. He's horrified that we don't have macaroni and cheese at our Thanksgiving, but we're learning from each other. Okay, so this really does tie in with our first story, which has to do with um, a thread on Twitter about Thanksgiving side dishes. You know, this time of year, there's all sorts of, of of social media threads, Twitter threads. Someone will ask a question and then, you know, lots of people will answer with various things. Then some of them are entertaining and some of them are strange and... um this one is about Thanksgiving side di- side dishes. And for me, side dishes for Thanksgiving are stuffing, well, you know, main dish. I don't know. Is turkey the main dish? Is the stuffing the main dish? What's the, what are the side dishes? Is turkey, I don't know. Is your protein your main dish? At any rate, stuffing. Um, we never did the canned cranberry sauce. My mom would make real cranberries when we were growing up, but nobody really liked them. And then she found this... Um, pretty fabulous jello cranberry cream uh, whipped cream recipe that's quite good uh i love a good pecan pie uh at any rate um maya kossoff is a, a freelance writer and edit, edit, editor and she shared her family's recipe for sea foam salad which is um green jello canned pears cream cheese and half and half uh, she shared this on Twitter over the weekend. Um, she said, I thought this was a normal thing every family made and served for Thanksgiving next to the turkey and stuffing until I was 18, she wrote. Actually, the friends that we are spending Thanksgiving with have something uh, kind of similar. It's, it's it's green, but it doesn't have all the same ingredients in it. It's pretty tasty. Uh, it's uh, one that our friend grew up with, and so his... Uh, his significant other is very kind and makes it for him every year. I, she likes it too, though, so... Um, so Maya Kossoff, and I apologize for mispronouncing her last name, said, I cannot wait to hear about the recipes you're all excited to make for Thanksgiving, but I am also here to hear about the weird, inexplicable retro family recipes that end up on your Thanksgiving table per tradition or nostalgia or whatever. Um, and so there is a picture of the seafoam salad, and it's even in a made in a jello mold, so it's shaped like a star. Very nice. Uh, she she said she shared the glorious green salad as a jumping off point for her followers to share their own uh, family recipes, and th- there were responses. So included on this list is plenty of Jello. Uh, this is according to an article in HuffPost.com, by the way. Uh, an impressive looking bologna layer cake frosted with ranch cream cheese icing. Ugh, I don't know. That just doesn't sound good. Maybe. Oh, oh, there's a picture. Yep. That would be slices of bologna with, wow. It's even garnished with um, green olives and what looks like spray cheese. Uh, wow. Wow. Um, anyway, boyfriend made this for my family's Thanksgiving last year. It's a bologna cake with ranch cream cheese icing. It was pretty good. Huh. Uh, okay. So there's that. Um, there's many creamy vegetable dishes and Watergate salad, uh, pistachio pudding and pineapple dish referred to as dragon barf. Hmm. Um, and then it says, mm, nostalgia and cool whip. So much cool whip. Yeah. I, you know, cool whip. Definitely a big part of my childhood. Haven't had it in a while. Uh, so this reminds me of the pear, quote unquote, salad my mom used to make growing up. We never had a cherry on top, but it was served on a bed of lettuce. Oh, yes, that's very, you know, jello often gets, jello salad often gets served on a little lettuce leaf, you know, um, iceberg usually, but not always, I suppose. What else do people have? Uh, oh, this one is not, oh, this, oh my, this one has a pear and what looks like Cream cheese or jello, or not cream cheese, cream cheese or cool whip and cheddar cheese? Oh wow, that's weird. Um, Alyssa Wilkinson writes, I personally cannot put this near my mouth, but I once witnessed a distant relation by marriage make meatballs in brown sauce by dumping frozen meatballs, a can of mild salsa, and a jar of Welch's grape jelly into a, cro- a crock pot. It's brown. Probably some of you have had something similar. Um, <laughs> oh no, I've seen this. I've totally seen this. Block of cream cheese on a plate, top of the jar of cocktail sauce, and a healthy portion of bay shrimp dip with Ritz. I just eat the shrimp and cocktail sauce with water, with a water cracker. No, I've totally seen that one. 
Uh, my family does dragon barf. Here it is, dragon barf. Also called Watergate salad, which is pistachio pudding, Cool Whip, cherries, marshmallows, coconut, and pineapple. I've had this. It's good. It's really good, actually. We didn't have the cherries in it, but it, it's, a, it's actually good. <laughs> I never heard it called dragon barf, but, um, yeah. And then there are some include, there's some recipes that are included. Um, tradition, canned asparagus, cream cheese, and ham slices. You spread the cream cheese on a ham slice, then put an asparagus spear on the middle and roll it. Then eat it. I've had that too. Um, <laughs> I don't know what this says to me. Ooh, magic tomato soup cake. I've heard of this. I have not had it though. Uh, my grandmother, who had zero cooking skills, used to make this every holiday. While I miss her presence at the table, I'm definitely happy we don't have to pretend to enjoy this abomination <laughs> anymore. <laughs> I've actually heard of tomato soup cake. Doesn't mean I want to try it. Although, hey, maybe it's good. Lots of these things are actually better than they sound. Some of them are not, but some of them I haven't tried. What what could you add to this list? I'm still trying to think of, uh, well, I just said I'm still trying to think of, but I said I've tried a lot or tried and or seen a lot of what popped up on that list. So I can't quite think of... um you, you know, when I was a camp counselor, we, there was often jello, green jello with carrots and stuff in it. That was never my favorite. Jello should be fruit. No carrots, no celery, no vegetables of any kind. Um, but that's not Thanksgiving. Although we did, and we, we may have served it on the time. We always, did, we did a kind of Thanksgiving feast once a week, which was a lot of turkey. I worked in the kitchen one summer and that was a lot of turkey took me a while to be able to eat turkey at Thanksgiving. I'm rambling and it's time for our first break. So <laughs> when we come back, we'll be talking about some more strange things of Thanksgiving. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Weird News Podcast and I'll be right back. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast. Uh, we were talking about weird Thanksgiving side dishes. And as I said, I would love to hear some of yours that you would add to that list. Our next story involves the pardoning of the turkey, which the president does every year. This year, President Trump pardoned um, a pair of turkeys, one of which was named Butter, I think I read. And that makes me say, okay, maybe it makes you wonder, why does the president pardon a turkey? It seems kind of strange. I mean, ceremonial, sure, but uh, it's, I mean, I don't know. The pardoning, the, the I, okay, let's just find out. So this is an article from NPR. And um, so, uh, you know, once again, during this week of Thanksgiving, uh, the president pardons turkeys. Uh, president Trump said, butter, I hereby grant you a full and complete pardon. Um, but. Oh, and Butter's Companion Bread will also be spared. Pardon from what? They didn't commit a crime? I mean, maybe they did. I don't know. But they, it's not like they committed... Okay, I'm just going to keep reading because I'm so confused. The president also falsely said, however, it uh, it is said Abraham Lincoln was the first to pardon a Thanksgiving turkey. Uh, he was the first to actually to spare a turkey, but it was a Christmas turkey. We'll find out more about that. The presidential turkey pardon is a strange, misunderstood, and as is evidenced by um, the president's misstatement, confusing tradition. It's also one that doesn't go back as far as you might think. Um, so why do they do it? It's um, a question that, you know, some people I'm sure have been asking for a while. And here are some of the answers. First, the author says, understand this event has been sustained by a special interest group, the Turkey Lobby. 
The National Turkey Federation, whose website is literally eatturkey.org, sponsors the event and has spent almost three million on lobbying efforts since 1998, according to a search of the Center for Responsive Politics lobbying database. Uh, Big Turkey has been given, giving turkeys to presidents since 1947, but these turkeys were originally meant to be eaten, not pardoned. The first Thanksgiving turkey on record to receive a reprieve was in 1963 when President John F. Kennedy received a 40-pound turkey whew, with a sign around its neck that read, Good eating, Mr. President. That is a big turkey. There's a picture. And, um, yep, he's wearing a sign around his, pre- his neck. Um, well, we'll just let this one grow, Kennedy said. <laughs> A Los Angeles Times article from November 20th, 1963, about the event the day before was headlined, Turkey Gets Presidential Pardon. A hundred years before that, there is record of Lincoln's pardoning a turkey, but it had been meant for Christmas dinner, not Thanksgiving. A live turkey has been had been brought home for the Christmas dinner, but Lincoln's son, Tad, interceded in behalf of its life. Tad's plea was admitted and the turkey's life spared, according to an 1865 dispatch from White House reporter Noah Brooks, according to the White House Historical Association. Kennedy never used the word pardon when referring to his bird. The first president to do so in referring to letting a turkey go was Ronald Reagan, and it was a joke. Um, actually deflecting from the Iran-Contra scandal. During the yearly turkey presentation in 1987, ABC News' Sam Donaldson pressed Reagan on whether he would pardon two key players involved in the weapons sale, Oliver North and John Poindexter. Reagan was already set to let the turkey presented to him go to a petting zoo, as Nixon had previously, and answered, if they'd give me a different answer on Charlie and his future, I would have pardoned him. After that informal use of the word, the event was formalized by the vice president, George H.W. Bush, in his first year as president. Let me assure you, he said, that this and assure you and this fine Tom Turkey that he will not end up on anyone's dinner table. Not this guy, Bush said in 1989. He's granted a presidential pardon as of right now and allow him to live out his days on a children's farm not far from here. One of today's turkeys will be spending the rest of its perhaps limited days at Gobbler's Rest at Virginia Tech University's Department of Animal and Poultry Science. Oh, oh my. Okay. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, Virginia Tech has a long tradition of supporting the turkey industry through research and outreach. Um, so it's fitting that the presidential turkey be, turkeys becoming part of the Hokie Nation is a new tradition. Not if they're going to experiment on it. Um, I don't know. Um, maybe not. Uh, maybe I don't know what they're going to do. It's, it's so it's the fourth consecutive year that the pardon turkey will head here to Virginia Tech. Um, despite a White House contest about which turkey should be pardoned, bread or butter, both were birds were expected to be spared, and they were. It's something presidents have done for the past few years. Um, the White House is using the contest to build its email list. Wow, this article just gets stranger and stranger and stranger. Um, so there you go. There's a little bit of history on um, the turkeys and why they're pardoned and where they go. I feel like a petting zoo would be nicer than research, but what do I know? Um, so yeah, it was not President Lincoln. This can be your your Thanksgiving tri- tri- the trivia. It was not President Lincoln who started this. He pardoned a Christmas turkey and he didn't use that word. He, um, you know... He acquiesced to his son Tad's request that they not eat that particular turkey, um, which in, you know, the 19th century was a pretty interesting view to take because animals were seen, you know, animals were for eating and most, most, most people would have just understood that. So at any rate, I feel kind of depressed now about turkeys, so... <laughs> We're going to move on to another story because I don't know what to say about turkeys anymore. At any rate, turkeys have been pardoned. It's been happening for a while, at least since the 60s. Uh, who, it's been, you know, they go various places. Who knows? There's contests, but apparently it's to get people on the email list. I don't know. There's just so many weird layers to this tr- turkey pardoning tradition. Who knows why things are the way they are? Not me. I think I'm going to take another break because my brain is um, overwhelmed by turkey news and trivia. 
And when we come back, we'll be having a our final story of the podcast that is not exactly Thanksgiving related, but it's um, holiday adjacent, maybe. You'll just have to come back and find out what that is. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Weird News Podcast, and I'll be right back. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome back to the GSMC Weird News Podcast. I said before the break that we were going to talk about a story that's not exactly Thanksgiving related, but it is holiday related. You know, Thanksgiving is a time when you spend with family and then you have to say goodbye to them. Do you have traditions for how you say goodbye? Do you have specific ways that you say goodbye in your family? Um, I know I've got one friend who, whose family, whoever is, is leaving the, the person who is being left in, you know, watches the car drive away. They don't walk into the house until the car is out of sight. So, you know, just things like that, that families do. Well, this story keeps popping, has kept popping up on my Facebook feed. And it's about saying goodbye in the Midwest. Now, I am not from the Midwest. Uh, Montana has some Midwestern kind of tendencies. And I uh, I grew up Lutheran, and there's a lot of Lutherans in the Midwest. So being Lutheran gives you some Midwestern tendencies as well. And then I worked with a lot of Midwesterners at the summer camp that I worked at two years for two years in college at any rate so uh this is the nine stages of goodbye you'll only understand if you're from the midwest and so since we are talking about thanksgiving and traditions and you know probably you'll have to say goodbye to your family at some point um then here are the nine uh this is from the odysseyonline.com and this is the nine stages of goodbye if you're from the midwest let's see if these resonate with you even if you're not from the midwest see how many of these resonate with you so number 1 is the whelp yeah actually i know this one uh the beginning of every good midwestern goodbye starts with the stand up and whelp this means you know you have to leave, but you're not going anywhere anytime soon. The whelp only functions as a signal that you must begin the process of leaving. Number two, the hugs. The next step in saying goodbye is the hugs. Everyone gets one, be it grandma, grandpa, your weird uncle, all the babies, even the dog gets a goodbye hug. My family does this. There's much hugging. This is by far the lengthy step because a Midwestern hug is a whole different breed of drawn out hug. Yeah, there's, there's hugging, there's swaying, there's patting. It's a, it's a thing. Number three is the walk to the door. So you've said the whelp, you've done hugging. Now you start to walk to the door. This can take a while. Uh, you know, once everybody has gotten that goodbye hug, the walk begins. Every Midwesterner knows that no matter how many steps away the door is, it will take no less than 20 minutes to get there during the stages of a goodbye. You have to talk about how good the food was or when you plan to see each other next. No matter the subject, the walk to the door always takes a hot minute. So you can see why this is, you know, this is a process. Number four, the doorway chat. <laughs> you you know, you finally made it to the door, but... Y- often you put your hand on the handle, right? And you start to open the door, but then you have another conversation. And you may not, maybe you open the door. And that's always fun when it's cold, so you're letting all the heat out. But, um, so you, you, you have the mid doorway chat. And this conversation has literally nothing to do with anything. And most of the time involves a lot of belly laughs. This conversation can range anywhere from five minutes to 45 minutes. We really hope you went to the bathroom before you tried to leave, because if not, you have to start this, the goodbye process all over from square one. Yep. Welp. 
<laughs> um, number five, the we really should be going. This simple statement single signals that you must end the doorway conversation and begin the descent to the car. You can imagine that that's not quick either. Number six, the second round of hugs. Yes, the first one was like 40 min- 45 minutes ago, maybe an hour. You have to hug again. Once the first hour has elapsed and the sun is setting, the second round of hugs begins. This time, there is less talking, but significantly more back padding and side swaying. In my family, you get the side swaying and the back padding no matter what. This time, the goal is solely to get out the door and you really have your eye on the prize, the doorknob. Uh, number seven, oh, I, I already talked about this, the hand on the doorknob. Almost there. The knob is in hand, but wait, there's another conversation to go still. You can't leave until someone says goodbye in a weird voice and sparks more laughter or your dad and uncle start doing that thing where they quote movies until they laugh so hard they cry. At this point, at least an hour has passed and you've moved 10 feet. I don't think we have that step in my family. The the movie quoting, yes, but that's like an every day, all day kind of thing with me and my brother and sometimes my dad but it doesn't usually pop up in goodbyes. Eight, the slow open conversation. I wonder if this is like a slow clap. Uh, So as you make your way down to the driveway, there is yet another conversation about whatever may arise. Who knows what time it is at this point? All you know is that it's been at least long enough to digest the huge Midwestern meal you just ate, and it's time for a snack. Number nine, the window wave. Once you've finally made it out of the house and into your car, you can fully expect that Midwestern hospitality window wave as you pull away. The only correct response to your grandma, to your grandma's porch light flickering wave is a series of honks to let them know that you truly care about the traditional goodbye. This is pretty typical of my family. Parts of it are. We spend more time, I think, in the driveway than we do at the doorway, even when it's cold we 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 tend to get to the car and stop and then you know there's that second round there's usually the round of hugs inside there's the round of hugs at the car there is the watching the car back down the driveway the waving sometimes the honking uh never really the porch light flickering but yeah this was the case when we went to my grandmother's house for christmas this is the case at my parents house now you have to go to the car the, the, there's, there's the goodbye in the house. Maybe it's not as lengthy as a Midwestern goodbye, but we always end up outside, which is dumb because Montana is cold in the winter. So is the Midwest. But why, why do we, why do we do the, 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 the Midwesterners have it right when they're doing the door conversation? Cause we have the door conversation at the door of the car and then everybody's freezing because of course you didn't bother to put your coat on. You're going back in the house if you're staying and if you're leaving, you're getting in the car and you don't want to wear your coat in the car. Anyway, what are your goodbye traditions? What are your Thanksgiving goodbye traditions, maybe more specifically? I would love to hear about them in the comments. Let me know. And um, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the GSMC Weird News Podcast. Uh, if you enjoy this podcast, help us get out to more people by subscribing to it, liking us on social media, following us on social media, commenting, doing all those wonderful social media type things. But also giving us a five star rating would be amazing. And I would be very grateful and list you as something that I am thankful for on Thanksgiving for many years to come. So uh, we'd appreciate that if you could do that in the meantime. I hope you're having a wonderful Thanksgiving week. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving day. Uh, please join me again for the next episode of the Weird News Podcast. And in the meantime, you yourself stay weird. <laughs>